First at six, a guilty plea from a man who killed two students at UNC Charlotte means that he will spend the rest of his life in prison. The plea also means that Tristan Terrell will not face the death penalty. This video from court just came into our newsroom. A judge sentenced him to two life sentences. Prosecutors say he told them he had a lot of student debt and committed the crime so that he would go to prison. Ellis Parlier and Riley Howell were shot and killed inside of a classroom. Prosecutors say the shooter randomly shot at students that he didn't know personally. Parlier's mother was among those who addressed the court this afternoon. UNC Charlotte's chancellor released a statement shortly after all of this played out in court today. It reads in part, we will never forget this tragic event and remain focused on honoring the victims and their families. Happening now, a woman accused of setting a Greensboro apartment complex on fire is in jail. Investigators say the suspect here, Aline Smith, broke into one of the apartments on Hans Lane last night with a sawed off shotgun. When firefighters got there, they say Smith was shooting and doors and breaker boxes were exploding. Investigators say police told firefighters to wait to put out the fire until Smith was in custody. That's where she is tonight, facing several charges, including arson and possession of a weapon of mass destruction. Steve King was in court today when Smith went before a judge. So Steve, what happened? Well, Talitha, Judge Birch announced that Smith could face more than 25 years in prison if convicted of all the charges connected to this incident. Now, she set Smith's bond at $750,000, and here's what Smith had to say to the judge via teleconference in the courtroom today. Uh, I just asked that you can at least go to my bond. Oh, that's true. I didn't. Excuse me. Go ahead, ma'am, if you want to say something. Now, in the courtroom, some family members were seen crying when the judge set her bond at $750,000 and refused to lower it. Two of Smith's friends talked in court today saying that everything that happened yesterday is, quote, out of her character. Now, Smith's next court date is on October 24th. Now, here at the Legacy Crossing Apartments, the building is a total loss, and more than 20 people are trying to figure out where they're going to live next. Think about yesterday, everything was fine, and look today. <laughs> Just crazy. Papa Sec is one of the more than 20 people without a place to stay. After police say Aileen Smith intentionally set the Legacy Crossing Apartments in Greensboro on fire on Wednesday. I'm sad. I live here six years, never have any problem. Never see any, any, anything bad like this, you know. Upstairs, downstairs, everything. Total loss. Total loss. I never expect something like this to happen. India Thompson was asleep when the fire ignited. She woke up to the sound of maintenance workers banging on her door, and they told her she had to get out right away. I had to run out. I didn't even have like no shoes on or nothing. It all happened at like at one time, so wow. like I didn't know until I was outside and I was processing everything and seeing what was going on. I seen smoke. I didn't really see the flames yet, just seen the smoke. And then that's when I seen, oh shoot, the building's on fire. It's just, it was like a lot to take in because you don't expect that. Like you see the stuff on TV, but you never think it happens to you. Now the Red Cross is helping anyone displaced from the fire until they can find a new place to live. However, Thompson and Sex say they're not sure what's next for them. Kind of panic because I live here by myself. So it's just like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to, you know, find the money to replace everything? I'm just thankful I'm alive. That's the greatest thing. I'm thankful they were able to get me out. I mean, life goes on, so. We got to keep it up and see what we can do next. Now, of course, while this is devastating to the people here at the Legacy Crossing Apartments, again, most importantly, firefighters confirmed no one was injured in all of this. Reporting live in Greensboro, Steve King, WXII 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Steve. You can read more information from court documents right now on WXII12.com. The president and CEO of a health insurance company is accused of driving while impaired in Archdale with his young children in the car. Patrick Conway leads Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. He was arrested back in June. According to the accident report, he crashed into the back of a tractor trailer on I-85. His two daughters were not injured. Conway is charged with DWI, child abuse, and reckless driving. Conway will not lose his job. A company spokesperson says the board of trustees decided, quote, his strong leadership will continue to be an asset. Conway is expected back in court next month in Randolph County. 
Right now, the Trump administration is threatening to cut funding for a Middle East studies program at UNC as well as Duke. The administration says that the program misuses federal funds to advance ideological priorities and unfairly promotes, quote, the positive aspects of Islam. The Department of Education sent a letter to the universities last month, giving them until Sunday to revise the program or lose federal funding altogether. UNC and Duke are not commenting. Senator Bernie Sanders is getting ready to speak to UNC students. He's not arrived just yet at the podium, but he is definitely en route on the way there. You're taking a live look at the Bell Tower Amphitheater. If you're not too familiar with campus, this is right outside of Keenan Stadium. Now, the Democratic presidential candidate is expected to start speaking at any moment, and recent poll shows that Sanders is in third place among Democrats. UNC is the first stop on Sanders' two-state college campaign tour. Now, Bernie Sanders will be at Bennett College in Greensboro tomorrow. The town hall starts at 1.30. You don't need a ticket, but you'll definitely want to line up early to get a spot. This weekend, Sanders will travel to South Carolina. He's hosting events at Winthrop University, Benedict College, and South Carolina State. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at new legislative maps that could drastically change who represents you in the state legislature in Raleigh. An analysis found Republicans would still remain in control of the General Assembly, but this is not a done deal yet. The court still needs to approve these new maps. Bill O'Neill is in Raleigh now with a breakdown of the potential changes in store. If you look at the maps, it's hard to tell what changes were made, but now we have the numbers behind those changes. Catawba College political scientist Michael Bitzer says based on those numbers, if the 2020 election is like the 2016 election, Republicans will remain in charge of the legislature. But he adds a major caveat. But in a normal political environment, these are the kind of numbers that I look at, but I have to always say we are not in normal political times. Bitzer crunched the numbers and found several local lawmakers could face more competitive races next year. For example, Forsyth County Democrat Evelyn Terry. Bitzer predicts her district as, quote, likely Republican. He says more than 60 percent of the voters in the 75th district are Republican voters. That's going to pose an interesting challenge to see if, again, incumbency voter loyalty to the incumbent on the Senate side, for South County Republican Joyce Kravick lost Republican voters in the redistricting process. Senate District 31 is now 54 percent Republican. Bitzer calls the district, quote, competitive Republican favored. I think it is significant. This kind of competitive Republican leaning uh, kind of district is certainly going to be one that I and others, I think, here in North Carolina will be watching if these maps are approved by the court. Bitzer finds a couple of other triad lawmakers in more competitive districts under the new maps. Guilford County Republican John Hardister and Alamance County Republican Steve Ross are now in districts with more Democrats than before. Bitzer ranks districts 59 and 63 as, quote, competitive, lean Republican. Bitzer makes no predictions on whether or not the court will accept the new maps, but says they are different. But there is a lessening of the partisan advantage, but still, just based on where people live and how they vote, there is still very much a Republican-oriented uh, majority in these districts. The big unknown is whether or not the court will accept the new maps. There's no timetable on a decision, but it's likely sooner than later. In Raleigh, Bill O'Neill, WXII, 12 News. Thank you, Bill. Happening now, many people are meeting the new superintendent of the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Public School System for the first time. Dr. Angela Hairston's first listening session is at Old Richmond Elementary School. Several other listening sessions are planned throughout the district over the next couple of months. And Forsyth Tech is celebrating its new president. Yeah, Janet Spriggs has been in the role since January, but today was her inauguration day. Spriggs previously served as the chief operating officer of the North Carolina Community College System. She attended two community colleges and says that experience taught her that access to higher education is critical for all students. One of our biggest challenges is that our students are working adults with lots of responsibilities. So often I tell people that our students are one flat tire or one medical bill away from having to drop out because life happens, has gotten in their way. And so our biggest challenge is finding those partnerships, those really 
good avenues for us to partner with other entities within our community that provide services that will help our students get over those hurdles when they see them. Janet Spriggs is Forsyth Tech's seventh president.